Hey everybody, who's ready to have some hippie banana bread? Too bad you can't have it, but you can make your own. And that's what we're gonna be making today. Um, I think this is one of my most popular recipes. It's uh, made with no oil, no eggs, no dairy, and there's just something about it. It tastes really good. People really crave it, they like it, they share it with their friends. Uh, at Christmas time, I made a bunch of small loaves like this and gave it to different people as gifts and even if they weren't plant-based people they still seem to enjoy it they were happy to get it and um, they requested to get some more after the holidays so i make it uh, quite often and give it away uh, i don't eat a lot of it because it is a dessert and it does have some sweetness in it so it's not something i would eat every day but it sure is a good thing to have if you're having an event a dinner or something and you want to have something sweet as a dessert or something nice to give to someone it tastes really good with tea or coffee so um i wanted to just make it with you so you could see how i really make it of course the recipe has been on my website forever and anyone could have the recipe it's already there but i think sometimes people have questions about well how did you do this and what could you do instead and what if i don't have this ingredient so i get a lot of questions now, if I don't answer your question during the video, which sometimes I don't see them until a little bit later and it's a little awkward to keep looking at the comments because my camera is not right in front of me where I can see everything from this distance. I promise after the video, I'll go back in and I will answer any questions that you uh, post there for me. Also, any comments are appreciated. And if you have a request for any recipe that you'd like to see me prepare, just let me know and I'll be happy to see if I can do it. So for the hippie banana bread, first of all, it's a very versatile recipe. I The recipe calls for bananas, but you could use pumpkin. And I have used canned pumpkin quite successfully. And I'm pretty sure you could use all applesauce instead of um, pureed bananas. So you could try that. And you can make it in any size pan. So for example, this size was made in a mini loaf pan. One of these, I think there are three by five mini loaf pans. And my recipe will make four this size. Today, I also made a larger one. And this one is uh, made in a standard loaf pan. So that's kind of this, this size, just your regular loaf pan. And I have them lined with parchment paper. So we don't have to do the, the typical, you know, um, spray oil or whatever on it. And they come right out and they're, they're fine. So what does it look like on the inside? We'll cut one in the middle. You can see it has <clears throat> a lot of different fruits and nuts. It has a cup and a half of pecans and walnuts. It has golden raisins and regular raisins. And it's completely done all the way through. I have had people tell me that, oh, that, that's a bad recipe because when I made it, it was raw inside. And then I, I get uh, feedback from other people that, oh, that's the best recipe for banana bread. I make it all the time and it's great. So I think the recipe is okay, but you really do have to watch how you make things in your oven. Maybe your oven has uh, the, heat, the temperature you think it is is not the temperature it really is. So. Keep an eye on your oven, maybe get an oven thermometer and check the temperature and see if it's really the temperature you think it is because that could be the problem. And you can't really trust the time. If I tell you, oh, make, bake it for 30 minutes and then you say, okay, and you take it out, it might be burnt. It might be raw inside because really, I don't know how packed tight it is with nuts or dried fruit, or if maybe you put a little bit more in your loaf pans than I did so those are all things to consider. So I'm gonna set the one that's already made off to the side here. I'm probably gonna give those away to a friend of mine because I'm making another one while we're doing this video so I can only have so much of this banana bread around or I might start eating a lot of it myself and I sure don't need to eat that much of it. So what are we gonna use? I'm gonna move my little table back here so you can see me better. Uh, we're gonna use some whole wheat pastry flour. And you can find this at the regular grocery store. 
Now right now it seems like a lot of flour, sugar, and baking products have been picked clean at the supermarket. I noticed that when I went the other day. It was like, oh, I guess everybody all of a sudden is going to be baking at home. Maybe they've got time now, so they're going to start making cakes and bread and whatever they used to make. I'm putting a cup and a half of the whole wheat pastry flour in here. So uh, if you can't find whole wheat pastry flour, you can try uh, white whole wheat flour or whole wheat flour, but it's not going to taste exactly the same. Uh, paste, whole wheat pastry flour is very fine, so it's kind of a real powdery flour, and I think that gives it sort of the texture that I'm used to it having, but that doesn't mean it, it won't be good. It will taste great. It, it just will be a little different. And people ask me about gluten-free. Could you make this gluten-free? Yeah, you can make it gluten-free with gluten-free flour. Now, I can't guarantee it's going to come out exactly the same. It's not something I've tried, but you can certainly experiment with it. Uh, this is almond flour or almond meal. Uh, the brand I have is from Bob's Red Mill. Now, you can get it in the bulk section of the supermarket, but a lot of bulk sections have been shut down. So um, I'm seeing if I can find these same ingredients in a package, and they did have the almond flour in the package. It's expensive, so um, just be aware of that. It's not cheap because it's just ground up almonds, so that, but that gives it a really good taste. So I have that, and then um, it also uses some um, baking soda, just a teaspoon of baking soda. So I'll put that in. And then it also uses salt. And oh, I left my salt in the other room. So we're going to skip the salt for today, <clears throat> for now. Um, and then cinnamon. So um, I don't have the cinnamon either. So I'm going to have to go in there and get salt and cinnamon. But first I'm going to do the other part of the recipe before I leave the room. Um, <clears throat> So on the dry ingredients, we just basically put the dry ingredients in a bowl and then we're going to stir them around with a whisk. We don't have to sift them, we can just use a whisk. And we want to really be sure to combine them well, all right? We don't, if we don't combine the ingredients well, uh, what will happen is you'll have little pockets of baking soda and that's never good. You just don't want to have you know, little areas where you've got, you know, two highly concentrated parts. And I'm going to run and get my salt and cinnamon. I'm sorry about this. I'll be right back. survive that big faux pas but that's all right okay so I'm going to put my salt in here it's a teaspoon and then I'm going to put the cinnamon in then I'm going to whisk it around a little bit more so that's the dry ingredients you know they're, they're it's not that complicated really it's pretty simple and uh, this amount will make one large loaf or four small ones. So it just depends on what size you want to make. And people do ask me, oh, can you make this into muffins and that sort of thing? Yes, of course you can if you want to. So then we have to do the wet ingredients. Now I get asked about this a lot too because I have some different wet ingredients in here. I have apple butter. So apple butter is just, really it's just kind of like an apple puree. And it's pretty easy to find. And apple butter is, uh, it does have an amount of sugar in it unless you get organic apple butter that's sugar free. And they do sell that. I found some at Whole Foods. Get a spoon at Whole Foods. And it was funny, I bought a jar a couple of days ago. I'm putting a half cup in my cup here. Um, when I went to Whole Foods and I got the apple butter, because I knew I was running really low, which I don't have enough. I have not even half a cup, so I'm going to supplement it with applesauce. When I picked up the bag, 
that had the apple butter in it by the handles, the bag promptly fell on the ground and cracked into a million pieces. So that was really ridiculous. I thought, well, great, these bags are so flimsy, they don't hold it, so I'm gonna take it back because it was not cheap. So I'm gonna use applesauce to supplement my apple butter because I didn't have quite enough. And I get asked that all the time, that people don't have access to apple butter. They'll ask me, can I use applesauce? I don't really have apple butter. Sure, you know, the applesauce and the apple butter consistency is very similar. So I don't think it would be a problem at all. I see some people have logged in and are watching. Someone, Terry Mayer, thank you very much for watching, Terry. I appreciate all your comments you're always giving me. And uh, everyone else who's watching, I appreciate that too. So we have the um, apple butter, and then the next ingredient is almond butter. Now you can use almond butter that is, this is from the bulk section of Central Market, which is a store that I use quite frequently. But um, let's say that right now the bulk sections aren't making almond butter. So let's see, another comment. Hi from Asheville, great, Asheville. That's a beautiful place. Oh, I see my friend Trisha is watching all the way from Ontario, California. Trisha, I've never met you, but I feel like I know you and I appreciate all the positive things you always say about my recipes. It means a lot to me to know that you even care that I'm doing what I do, so thank you. Um, if you don't have a bulk section, you can buy almond butter in a jar. And this is from Whole Foods and it's unsweetened and unsalted. So be sure when you get your almond butter, you get that kind, and I like this one. I haven't opened it yet, but I can tell that it's already mixed up well. So Whole Foods has a really nice almond butter. But I usually get the Central Market almond butter because it's really chunky, and there's just something kind of nice about the texture of it in the hippie banana bread. So people that eat my hippie banana bread always think it's really good, but it has this really coarse almond butter in it, and I do think that makes a difference. So. If you can get your hands on this kind of freshly ground almond butter, get it. And if you make your own almond butter, just make sure you stop before it gets completely creamy so that you have kind of the coarser almond butter. I think you'll like it like that. So I've got the almond butter, apple butter and almond butter, or applesauce if you don't have apple butter. And also, I've been asked a lot of times if you can make your own Apple butter, of course. I heard that it's sim as simple as cooking apples in an Instant Pot. Uh, I see somebody else here. Miss the amounts of almond flour. Uh, it's half a cup of almond flour, so it's not too much. And remember, this recipe is already on my website at chef-julia.com, and it's called Hippie Banana Bread. So you can find this recipe. You don't have to write down any of the ingredients. It's already on there. So um, you can make your own apple butter and then not put sugar or anything in it. The next ingredient is maple syrup. Okay, now I get a lot of grief about people saying, ooh, it has sugar in it, it has syrup in it, when they look at my recipe and they say, that's not healthy. Okay, well, there are forks over knives and the whole food plant-based recipes and lots of cookbooks that have things that have cane sugar, maple syrup, date sugar, uh, yeah, okay. date sugar, and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it's okay once in a while to have something sweet, but if you don't want to put maple syrup in it because you're trying to cut back on sugar, just leave it out. It will be fine. Uh, you can also use date syrup. Date syrup is pretty nice. Um, they sell this on Amazon. I wasn't able to ever find it in a store, but you can get date syrup. Date syrup has a lower glycemic index and it's just made from organic dates. So if you want to use that instead, you could, or just leave out the maple syrup altogether. The same with the um, turbinado or cane sugar. I use half a cup of cane sugar in my recipe. Now you might think, oh, well, you don't even need that. Well, you really don't, but I use it in my recipe. So. If you don't want to put this granulated cane sugar, it's not refined white sugar. Uh, you could use terminado sugar. You could use maple sugar. So you could use any kind of organic sugar, but 
just remember, you don't have to use any kind of sugar in here. And, and that's a common question people will say, oh, I don't want to make something that has so much sugar in it. That's just not good for you. And I you know, give everybody the same response. Leave out all the sugar, uh, substitute with dates as your fruit or date syrup or mashed up dates and you'll be just fine. I haven't really tried it that way, but I, I'm um, confident that it would work because I always use really sweet bananas. Oh, and I was gonna show you that these bananas are nice and ripe, but they're not rotten. So don't let your bananas get ripe to the point where they're you know, slimy because that won't taste good. And I found this, this is a strange thing, but um, <clears throat> I never had one before. And I don't know why I decided to get one maybe a few months ago. You hang the bananas from it. And I thought that was always kind of silly. Why do you need that? Well, it makes all the difference in the world because what happens is the bananas, when they're hanging, they ripen very evenly and they stay um, in a state of kind of semi-ripeness for a long time without rotting. So it really does work well and it preserves the bananas and they stay, like even though these look really brown on the outside, the inside is still creamy and nice. Even though they look really ripe, they're not overripe at all. So. I'm going to take, my recipe calls for um, a cup of bananas, I need a fork. It calls for a cup of bananas, so I, I'm going to mash one at a time in my bowl. I just have a kind of a flat bottom bowl because it's a lot easier to mash the banana in a, something that's smaller than it is to put it in the great big bowl. You don't want to add it to the wet ingredients and then start mashing it because it's just going to be hard. It's not going to mash well. Now, if you're making comments, I might not be able to stop and read all of them. I'll try. Some of them are hard to see. Where, where did you say I can find the recipe? Okay, um, the recipe is at chef-julia.com. That's my website. It's just all lowercase, chef-julia.com. Someone else wanted to know where to find the date syrup. That date syrup I ordered on Amazon. I have not seen it in the store. It's called Date Lady Syrup. And uh, I've looked for it in stores. People have told me they've seen it in stores, but I have not seen it yet. Uh, the almond butter that I used is a local brand. It's um, McCutcheon's, or apple butter, sorry. And, um, I don't know if they sell this all over, but there are so many different brands of apple butter. It was funny, when I went to Whole Foods, the peanut butter and jelly section was completely empty. And I, I walked around and I was looking, and there was this whole section of apple butter. Nobody had touched the apple butter, but all the strawberry jam and all the typical stuff was gone. Okay, so I have my three bananas. Now, I'm just guessing that three bananas are going to fill my one cup. I usually don't measure, but just to see if three bananas equals one cup, like my recipe says, we're going to we'll measure it and we'll see. All right, it does come out pretty well. It is a cup. So we have a cup of mashed bananas, and I'm going to put them in here. I've had questions about, could you use other fruit in place of bananas? Oh, no, that was only two bananas. Look at that. See, I'm busy talking, not paying attention. That was pretty much a cup of bananas, so these must be big bananas. I'm going to mash up half, because it wasn't quite a cup, so I'm going to use half of this one. I'll save one half and eat it later after the video for a snack. No, maybe I'll have some of this banana bread. So I'm going to put the rest of the banana in here. Okay, a thing I get asked all the time by people <clears throat> is, can they use other fruit in their hippie banana bread? Yes. In fact, I experimented with my classes. I have cooking classes, used to have cooking classes, quite frequently. They're uh, stopped for now, but in my cooking classes, um, I would make banana bread all the time because when people come, I have it all sliced up, ready to serve, it, to eat as a snack. And so in the fall, I thought, well, I'm going to try to make hippie pumpkin bread. So um, I use um, pumpkin puree 
not pumpkin pie filling, but pumpkin puree in a can, just like what you use for pumpkin pie. <clears throat> and I used a cup of pumpkin puree in place of bananas, and it worked fine. And the, the hippie pumpkin bread tasted just as good. So then I started thinking, I bet we could substitute apples, like mashed up cooked apples, like apple butter, but not quite as smooth, maybe a chunkier version. Because whatever it is, you want it to have a similar texture to the bananas. So try that. I, I thought it worked really good. Let me see if there's any more questions since then. Hey, Julia Buttermore. Oh, Brenda Carney. I'm so glad that you're watching. Brenda Carney lives in Louisiana, and she came all the way out for a cooking class. And she was the inspiration for one of my best recipes ever, and that's my waffles. She had the most fasc fascinating waffle recipe. It wasn't plant-based, but it had a lot of ingredients in it. So I played with it and played with it and came up with a really great waffle recipe. And Brenda, we love those waffles. So thank you so much for coming out last year and taking a class. I really appreciate it. Okay, so we have um, most everything in here. Now we're gonna add our vanilla extract about a teaspoon and a half. And this is just your typical grocery store vanilla extract. I have a teaspoon and a half measure here. So we'll put that in there. And the next ingredient is aquafaba, two tablespoons. I get a lot of questions about that too. Um, aquafaba is the liquid from a can of chickpeas. So uh, what I do when I open up a can of chickpeas, and I use Trader Joe's chickpeas typically, is I measure two tablespoons in these little portion cups. You can buy portion cups. Okay, hi Kendra, nice to see you again. You can buy portion cups in regular grocery stores. Uh, I get them at Sam's because I use them a lot in the having a chef business, so I get the ones where there's hundreds of them, you know container and then I tend to use them over the course of a year or so. Okay, so I have all my wet ingredients, aquafaba, mashed bananas, vanilla extract, maple syrup, cane sugar, uh, apple butter, almond butter. So you see it, it's kind of this nice smooth consistency and the bananas are mashed up really well. Uh, but you can still see chunks of banana. It doesn't have to be mashed to where it's a liquid. Then I have my pastry flour, almond flour, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, and I think that was it. Yeah, those are all the dry ingredients. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mix, since I have the dry ingredients in a bigger bowl, I'm going to put the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. But I've done it either way and it works fine. I, I'm sure there's probably, it's probably the opposite. You're supposed to put the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients, but don't report me to the culinary school that I graduated from. It was 10 years ago, so I don't think they would do anything now. And I don't care. Life is too short, right? With what we're going through right now, I think it's time for a little comfort food. So, you know, some hippie banana bread and a cup of tea. When you're stuck at home, treat yourself. But at least it's not junk food, really. Well, it's not as junky as it could be. So um, I plan to give the extra loaves that I made to my personal trainer, Cone, who is still having to work really hard. And my other friend, Jamie, who had a heart attack last year, and has been trying really hard to work on his diet and eat better. So he loves this hippie banana bread. So since I'm gonna have, after I make this, I'm gonna have the equivalent of about four loaves of it, I'm gonna have a lot. And then I'm gonna keep the rest and I think I'm gonna eat it, share it with my husband. You know, he's a good guy. Um, I have walnuts and pecans. So the next part of my recipe is start adding stuff. This is what makes it hippie banana bread because it's full of fruits and nuts and crunchy things. I grew up in the 70s. I'm, uh, I'll be 66 this year, so I'm a baby boomer. And I was in high school in the early 70s, and I was a hippie. I had long hair parted in the middle. Um, you know, I wore bell-bottom jeans and peasant blouses, kind of like this one. 
and you know beads around my neck so I think hippie is a fun term but hippie banana bread someone else uh, you're so kind oh that's funny oh PJ is watching PJ comes to a lot of my classes and her husband Richard loves to make hippie banana bread and I think he probably makes it once a week so it's one of their favorite recipes I use walnuts and pecans uh, you could use anything. You could use sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, almonds. So like now where it's hard to get out and go to the store, well, whatever you have, um, whatever you have in your pantry. I toast the nuts uh, is the recipe. Oh, the recipe's on my website, chef-julia.com. It's called Hippie Banana Bread, and you'll see it. Someone's asking a question. My husband loves pumpkin bread. Did you say we could substitute pumpkin puree? Yes, Tricia. You can put one cup of pumpkin, pumpkin puree in place of the bananas. Another question. Um, yeah, PJ said we were both hippies. <laughs> oh, someone else, well, they love our banana bread from Susan Celine from Utah. Thank you all. One more, I'll read one more comment. Banana bread is my favorite. I'm a hippie girl too. Okay, all the hippie girls out there. You know, that was a fun time. I don't know that I'd want to go back, but you know, I lived through it. Hopefully we'll all live through this too. So use up whatever nuts you have left in your house. These are the almonds and pecans. This is probably a cup and a half. I like to put a lot of nuts in the hippie banana bread. That's what makes it different because it's, when you look at it, if you look at mine, you know, there it's packed with fruits and nuts. It's really dense. You can see them in there. And when you bite into a piece, you can taste it all. And I think that makes it great. And then I usually put whatever dry fruit I have on hand. Today, I have some raisins. These are some organic raisins from Central Market that taste really good. Put fruit and stuff in that tastes really good to you. If it's old and dried out and stale, it's not gonna taste good in your Kimpy banana bread either. Then um, I'll put in another fruit, dried fruit. This is golden raisins. And I believe, oh, someone else is on there. A oh, hippie girl that went to Woodstock. Wow, that is hippie. I never made it to Woodstock. But I did go to the uh, California, any, if anyone's ever heard of the Monterey Pop Festival where Jimi Hendrix and the Mamas and the Papas performed. I was there. Here's another one. What did you think about adding pumpkin seeds? Okay, pumpkin seeds are fine. Like I said, you can put any nut or seed in there. Uh, sometimes I wasn't too crazy about pumpkin and sunflower seeds in it. It just, it just didn't appeal to me personally, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It was just not in my taste. Uh, preference but you can put that in there you can put uh, a fourth of a cup of five different kinds of nuts there's no right way to do this okay so now my batter's made and you can see it's thick okay so if you make this and your batter is thin then you did something wrong oops and it's not mixed together that well see there was this big thing of flour uh, when you're mixing a batter you want to be sure and get the flour mixed in it, but you don't want to overmix it because um, flour has gluten. And if you overmix flour, the gluten forms and then it has that kind of real rubbery texture. So now we're going to put it in the pan. And like I told you before, I have a, a large loaf pan and a small one. And uh, when I made it earlier today, I'll show you these loaves. I made one that size. And the second one was a, the full size one. So th that's what this batter made two of the banana breads. So I'm going to, and this is parchment paper that I have cut to fit the loaf pan. Because if you don't put something in there, this will stick. Now, could you put cooking spray? Yes, but you know, we're folks over knives, oil-free crowd, right? So we're really not using oil. So I would say use the parchment paper. But have I ever put 
baker's joy in when I've been in a hurry and had to make a bunch of banana bread? Yes, I have. Don't report me to Forks Over Knives and tell on me, but I have done that. Now, I'm not doing that today, and I'm going to try to not do that anymore because it works so well to use the parchment paper. Then what I do is on the top, I put a row of whole walnuts, just because I think that makes it look cool, because the walnuts cook and they, they get really toasty and brown, and at the end, if you do the walnuts on the top, at the end, it looks cool. You have this kind of nice row of walnuts, or you could use pecans or whatever. I think the picture I posted had pecans, so we've got that one. And then I have the little mini loaf pan. Oh, and um, you can also use these silicone pans. I don't really like the size. I think they're a little too small, so I haven't really been using them. I kind of have my own way of doing it, and it's using the small loaf pans. So I'm going to use the rest of my batter in this other mini loaf pan, and then I'll get them both in the oven. And if, if you're looking at your pan and you're thinking you got a section that didn't have quite as many fruits and nuts, you can always, you know, put some more on top. So I'm going to cover this one with some more walnuts that I had, whole walnuts. I'm going to just put it over the whole top of this one because these are not walnut halves or little pieces. And then I'm just going to stick these in a 350 degree oven. And I start with 30 minutes. I'm going to check them after 30 minutes because um, <clears throat> I know that the smaller one might be done. Let me see if there's any questions. Why don't you use a spatula to get all the batter out of the mixing bowl? Well, because I'm doing this live video and it will take a lot of time and it would be boring to watch. So if you weren't watching me, I would do that. But I don't, I'm trying to make these videos a little faster, Catherine, but that's a good point. You know, take your whatever's in your bowl, get a rubber spatula, scoop it all out, don't waste it. So she's right, I would normally use this. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I think that's it. Uh, this is her, oh, Terry's favorite recipe. Okay, so um, when you make the hippie banana bread, you can, you know, use it right away. But another thing that's really good about it is it freezes well. So you can slice it into individual pieces, wrap it in some kind of plastic wrap or whatever you want to use. And then what I like to do is put the individual pieces in a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer. And that way um, I don't have to feel like I have to eat the whole thing. I can just take a piece out, have one piece, and I always have some in the freezer. And it freezes really well. Another variation, okay. What is Baker's Joy? <laughs> uh, Baker's Joy is like Pam. It's like spray oil. And I, I have it in my pantry because I used to use it for making cakes and stuff. So it's just like a spray oil. If you use it, you know, I blot it off so that there's not much on there. Uh, another, um, I was going to tell you that I made the most delicious hippie banana bread with dark chocolate recently. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't use any fruits. And I got some of this really good, uh, you know, just like the, what you make for making fancy chocolate. It's, this one is from Ecuador. It doesn't have any milk solids or any additives. It costs uh, $15 a pound. So I had it to make it for a, a chocolate class. So I made uh, hippie banana bread and I put tons of this dark chocolate in it. And it turned out really well. So if you have some vegan, uh, plant-based chocolate somewhere that you want to use it really goes well in the, the hippie banana bread so that's the recipe for today and uh, let's see there's one more comment can you do a video on setting up a mason jar set of spices um, I'm late to the video what did you if you don't have bananas okay if you don't have bananas you can use pumpkin so canned pumpkin puree works really well or you could use some cooked apples. I'm not sure if you could just use all applesauce. I've never tried that. 
I'm pretty sure apple butter would work, but that there's kind of a sugar content to some apple butter. So I think what I would do is I would make my own cooked apples. I would just either cook them on the stove or cook them in the Instant Pot and have kind of like just cooked apples in place of the bananas, not too watery. Because remember, you want it to be the same consistency as bananas or it will be such a wet batter. All right, so um, demonstration on spices, sure, I could do that. I don't usually buy a lot of spices ahead of time. Now I buy them in the bulk section of the supermarket because they tend to go bad, but I have so many spices and that would be a great video. If you have an idea for a video that you'd like for me to do, uh, whatever it is, a suggestion, just let me know and I plan to do these as often as I can. My original goal was to do one a day. Um, it is very time consuming to um, prepare to do a video every single day and um, you know I'll keep doing it as long as I can if you think it's worthwhile for me to do it just comment below and let me know because I've enjoyed it and uh, I'm trying to think of new things to do tomorrow I'm gonna make a soup because my daughter-in-law is at home with a viral laryngitis she does not have the uh, coronavirus, she went to the hospital and she has um, a very bad case of viral laryngitis and I'm gonna make her some soup. So I'm gonna make a vegetable and rice soup, kind of like a gumbo style soup tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And also comment below and let me know a good time. Uh, let's see, people are saying, thank you. I need a veggie sandwich, not a burger. So give me comments on what you'd like to see me make and stay tuned tomorrow and I will make the vegetable and rice soup kind of gumbo style. And again, I appreciate everybody watching. It really makes me feel good to know that you would take the time out to watch my videos and I hope to see you back here tomorrow. Take care everybody.